Hello, I'm Dr. Cheryl and welcome to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl, Wealth Transformation. Our show is raising the consciousness and awareness with the relationship with wealth and applying unconditional love. Always remember that your present situation is not your final destination. The best is yet to come by Zig Ziglar. I'd like to start with a little joke. A Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her five and six-year-olds. After explaining the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother, she asked, Is there a commandment that teaches you how to treat our brothers and sisters? Without missing a beat, one little boy, the oldest in the family, answered, Thou shalt not kill! Our show will be the wealth of the power of the heart with filmmaker Batiste de Pop. Batiste de Pop was born in 1977 in Brosat, Belgium, in a spirit with a spiritual explorer, an author, and a filmmaker. He attended the Tilburg School of Law in the Netherlands. But after graduation with a lucrative job offer before him, he underwent a spiritual awakening that caused him to abandon the strict practical law, world of law. Batiste explored the realm of the heart and what it means to live from the heart space rather than living merely from the head. This change of emphasis led directly to some astonishingly, astonishingly synchronistic events. From his spiritual awakening blossomed the concept of the movie in which he would interview leading spiritual teachers, authors, and scientists of today. Batiste went on to film and become good friends with many of the interviewees and was generously helped by Gary Zukoff, Eckhart Tolle, Maya Angelou, Isabella Land, and others. For more on this book and film, please search The Power of the Heart. The Power of the Heart is from the director of The Secret, Drew Harriet. This unparalleled and life-changing film is about the astonishing power and intelligence of your heart. My name is Maya Angelou, and I believe that the heart is the most forceful, impactful element in our lives. If the heart is so powerful, why is it so easily broken? You will never, ever reach your full potential if you don't open your heart. I mean, sometimes people hate one person, and that's bad enough. I hated eight million people. They tried to kill me. How do you forgive such a thing? I wish to see good in people. It took almost dying to make that journey from my head to my heart. The power of the heart is to be connected with who you are at the deepest level. Well, that's fine, but how can we do that in the real world? I am a person who has a lot of fear. Every time that I have to write a new book, would I be able to share my soul? We did an experiment, and we actually discovered something quite remarkable. The heart seems to be connected to a type of intuition that is not bound by the limits of time and space. But what is that source of intuition, and how can we learn to tap into more of that? What is wrong with you? You forget? The heart is the only thing we can trust. Oh, Baptiste, thank you so much for joining um, us today on our show. Um, I'm delighted to have you here. Um, your, your story and your book and your movie are just beginning. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me on your show, Cheryl. Absolutely. Um, it's, um, it's wonderful to be able to speak with you about such an important topic as the power of the heart and un unconditional love, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I have already done your introduction um, that I got, and um, so I just would like to go 
right into, I mean, I witnessed your movie, I witnessed you uh, and your story, and I would love for you to share how you got to this place of um, sharing this wonder, I mean, it's very powerful because if we don't live from our heart and have that balance with our mind and our heart, um, I mean, life really is not, doesn't have the depth and, and the warmth and, the, and the, the good feeling that we could have otherwise. So please tell us about how you got to this place. Well, I was a lawyer in the city of Amsterdam uh, but I felt cut off from my aliveness. I realized I didn't want to be a lawyer anymore for the rest of my life. And I had to make a decision uh, of what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I, I know what I didn't want to do, be a lawyer anymore. I, did, I know that I, I was, um, you, know uh, you know, I was... How, how did you know that? How did you really know that? Well, I had worked hard to be a lawyer and... Uh, I was doing it, and I, you know, but I was not happy. Uh, and life is short, and my uh, grandmother had just passed in that period, and I realized I, I, I have to do something that makes me feel alive, and not uh, that makes me feel like a zombie. Um, and in that period, I, you know, finding my purpose in life became an an, an item. And in in, in that time, uh, I saw a video. And it was part of a New Earth a web class series, and it was being hosted by Oprah Winfrey. And this was just an episode of that whole series, and it was on YouTube. And um, in this uh, video, Oprah Winfrey and Eckhart Tolle, they were speaking about finding your purpose in life. And Oprah said, I think there's nothing more important than finding your purpose in life. And then Eckhart replied, and he said something that really changed my life, because he said, you cannot get there through thinking. You can't get there through thinking. And that really shifted everything, because all that I knew was thinking, you know, rational, linear, logical thinking. And I realized that I was trying to find my purpose through thinking. And he said, Eckhart said, if you want to find your purpose in life, then you can ask yourself, what do I want from life? But a more powerful question would be, what does life want from me? So what does the bigger want from me? And he said, if you want to find the answer to this question, what does life want from me? You have to go into nature. And the best way uh, to go into nature, um, no, he said, you have to find stillness. And the best way to find stillness is to go into nature. So the next day I went into nature and I started walking. Uh, and while I was walking, I asked myself, what does life want from me? What does life want from me? What does life want from me? And I, I just kept repeating this question. And after one hour of doing this, um, basically nothing happened. So I thought mm -hmm. it might not work. Um, um, and I was impatient. But it started to rain very hard all of a sudden, and I forgot all about the question, and I started to run to find shelter from the rain. And I found three, uh, three old big trees. And when I was standing under those trees, I felt there was a bone in my heart uh, that broke. I, I, I felt I had a heart attack. I thought I was going to die. Mm. And I, I said, oh my God, you know, I'm going to die now. It's over. I'm standing here in the rain. And they're probably going to find my body here in a few days. Or, and I also thought this is probably the answer to the question, what does life want from me? Oh. And, but if I would describe the feeling again, I felt there was a bone in my heart and it broke. And of mm -hmm. course, I know we don't have bones in our hearts, right. but mm -hmm. that's how it felt. Yeah. And it felt really painful. And when this happened, I had an overwhelming feeling of love, of peace, of clarity, of gratitude. But most of all, I had an overwhelming feeling of coming home. I felt very happy. I had a powerful feeling of coming home that I never felt before. And when I was experiencing this, the idea came to me, you have to make a movie about the heart. And I said, oh my God, this is it. Because I remembered what Eckhart Tolle had, had said. He said, you can't get there through thinking. And this was coming yeah. through my feeling. This right. was coming through sure. a very powerful feeling of love and of coming home. You, you allowed yourself to yeah. feel it fully. Yeah. So I said, um, that's it. So I was happy for 
you know, I, I had this eure eureka, hallelujah feeling. Oh my God, I finally know what I'm supposed to do with my life. But then, of course, my mind started to kick in, and my mind said, you're crazy. <laughs> Um, you know, you're a lawyer, so you don't know anything about the heart. Um, <laughs> what does that say for lawyers? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I thought that really. And uh, you don't know, uh, my, my mind said, you don't know anything about film production. You don't know anyone in film production. Yeah, so right. five years ago, um, this all happened. And, uh, but at that moment, I realized that my mind did, had not made me very happy until then. So I thought, okay, I've... Nothing to lose. <coughs> I have nothing to lose. I'm going to follow the aliveness that I feel in my heart. And that's how the whole journey started. Oh wow, well, well, that is that is wonderful that you are so driven and compelled and are pushed from passion to fulfill this. Yes. You know, I mean, thank goodness for Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, thank you. you and, know, and I mean, all of them. Eckhart uh, has become part of the movie, The Power yes, of the Heart, and the part right. of the book, Power of the Heart. So I told him what had happened. So he really, he and Oprah, they really initiated this uh, oh, whole project. Wonderful. Well, it's, it's such a wonderful support. I mean, wow. How could you get any better, actually? So, well, I'd like to start asking some questions. Um, Please. Digging into the movie and the message. Um, how do you really trust this this question is for the viewers um is how do you really trust your intuition mm. well it's first important to see um that um, science now proves that the heart can see things before they take place you have seen the movie so in the beginning of the movie there is this um heart met experiment where they show that uh people can see events before they take place. And this has been done in many independent laboratories, laboratories in yes. the world. So yes. this helps our mind to trust the heart. Uh, what is also important to know is that, um, you know, what is the difference between the mind and the heart? So the heart sees things from a bigger perspective. And the best way to explain it is this. If you are on a boat on a river and you are the mind, then the mind can only see the next bend, the next turn on the river. And if you're on that same boat on the river, and if you are the heart, the heart can see the whole river from source to sea. But of course, our challenge is to learn to trust the heart. Uh, the heart can see everything from a much higher perspective, but we don't trust it, and it's only yeah. normal. We can only learn to trust it if we start experimenting with it. Right, right. Uh, you see that in the movie too, all the people in the movie, they don't choose to live from the heart, but they are forced into a situation where they have nothing other uh, they have, they've got nothing else to rely on. So they start working from the heart because they have no choice. You know, they, all the conventional skills and the conventional thinking doesn't help anymore. So they start really working from that place. You see it with Immaculate, the Tutsi woman in the movie. You know, right, right. listening to her heart really saves That's her right. life uh, eventually. Yes, yes. And um, you can only learn to trust the heart if you start experimenting with it. But the heart can see events before they take place. It is our um, seed of it is the seat of the soul. It is the place where our higher self speaks to us. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, speaking for myself, is that I constantly have demonstrations um, of things that happen, synchronicities that happen. And like Deepak Chopra says, that their synchronicities happen all the time if we, yes. just, if we just listen. And I mean, yes. I say that the heart and the mind are one together. And when you know that, you know it. There's no guessing, yes. second guessing. Um, so yes, so we keep getting demonstrations of. Yes. Yes, I mean, if, if, if you know, intuition and synchronicity, they are connected because if you are tapped into your intuition, you experience more signals because you can only experience, uh, you can only experience the synchronicity when you're tapped into your intuition. That's absolutely. You, 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 you cannot see the signals if you're not aligned with your uh, higher self, with right. your intuition. Absolutely. So leading on to the next question is, how, how do you really forgive? I know that there's forgiveness in, in, in this. And, and from your perspective, you know, how do you really forgive? Well, we have a very powerful forgiveness story in a movie uh, about a Tutsi woman in Africa, Immaculate Ilibagiza, who forgives basically the killers of her family. 
And um, why is this story so important? Because it stretches our definition of what forgiveness is. Because if she in Africa is able to forgive the killers of her family, then we in the US and for me, uh, based in Europe, we should certainly be able to forgive, you know, the people we need to forgive uh, in our family or, you know, in, in our, you know, in our society. Yeah, yeah business and, associates or somebody like that. Exactly. And um, I think it's very important because I had a lot of conversations with Immaculate, who has forgiven the killers of her family. Yeah. She said to me, listen, Baptiste, the biggest threat were not the people who killed my family or who were trying to kill me. The biggest threat was the anger and the toxicity of the anger that I was feeling. I was not angry towards one person. I was angry towards 8 million people. And um, she said, you cannot imagine how much anger that is. And this anger was killing me from the inside out. So I had to forgive in order to survive. Because it, I said, she said, if I would feel like this for a few weeks, I would die. Yeah. I would have died. So right. you must understand that forgiveness is something you do for yourself to remove the blockages uh, of toxicity that you're feeling. It's what Nelson Mandela said. Nelson Mandela said, holding a resentment against someone is like drinking poison and thinking it will kill the other person. So if you realize that forgiveness is something you do for yourself, to heal yourself, to move on f for yourself, uh, then I think you will see that it's very powerful. I know a lot of people who cannot forgive and mm -hmm. it's killing them from the inside out. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's, it's, you know, it's a slow killer in a way, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it takes time, but it's very, very bad for your health if you cannot forgive. You know, one thing yeah. that, that I have taught in, w about forgiveness is writing it out. You know, I forgive my mother for neglecting me. I mean, that's just an example. And just yeah. writing out because then it helps get it out of your body. You know, yeah. since, since our body takes in everything that we think and feel. So that's very important to just to release it, just to write it out. I mean, if you've got some deep seated, un, you know, forgiveness issues. Oh, well, thank you. So what 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 can we do and what blocks the heart? What blocks to get to access to your heart besides your mind? What, what can we do to un unblock the access to your heart? What I've learned from interviewing all these people, Maya, Angela, Paolo Coelho, Isabel Yende, Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, in most of the cases, all those people, they just wanted to fit in. They just wanted to live the conventional life. They just had, you know, conventional education. And they did not necessarily want to go to the heart, but they are all put in a crisis situation. Yeah. Uh, for instance, Eckhart Tolle, he wanted to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, the crisis is so urgent. And in this crisis, they realize that the conventional skills, the conventional way of thinking cannot help them through the situation anymore. So they are pushed to go inside. And there they discover the heart. So most of the time, it's never a choice. But later on, when you have discovered this power of the heart, and it, the power of the heart is to be connected with, with who, who you are at the deepest level, then you can make that choice every day because you know what you're talking about you know what it is and then it's like what Maya Angelou says then every day you have to work at it every day you have to go to the heart every day you yeah. try to open yeah. your heart yeah. so then it becomes a practice yeah. uh, so it starts first with uh, the realization of how important it, it is and, 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 and in a lot of cases not always but in a lot of cases it is a crisis first where you decide to live from the power of your heart uh, instead of your mind right. and then when you know this when you know what it is then every day you have to work at it I have to work at it every day absolutely I do every too. day I have to forgive every day I have to remove the black blockages every day I have to choose for love forgiveness uh, compassion uh, and gratitude again the one yes. yes and the one thing that I've been practicing for many years is gratitude numero uno is being grateful. Oh, okay, I completely agree. You know, because because if you're not grateful for the small things, how can we let in the bigger things? You know, I mean, you know, if it like like when when your movie and your book really start taking off internationally more than it is now, which I'm sure it will. You know, if yes. if you're not ready to receive it, then 
you know, it may pass by, but I don't think so. <laughs> you know, but it's by, like being grateful. Being grateful. Thank you, God, Spirit, Universe. Yeah, I, I think that a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Absolutely. So but we have to do it consistent. Yes, really. every day, every day, sometimes multiple yeah. times a day, you know, depending, yes. depending on what challenges, which of course challenges are opportunities, but depending on wh how, how, you know, it's like I, sometimes I resist it, but, you know, being grateful for the challenges because it's making me a better person. It's making, you know, the bigger, the bigger the challenge, the bigger the reward. And well, it's, it's like what Mark Nepo says in the movie. Um, we don't want the challenges and we never choose them, right? When they're there, we say, oh my God, why is this happening to me? But it's like a mess, match, like a match that holds fire. Until it strikes against something, there is no flame. So w when we have this resistance, these challenges, uh, it is for us the best opportunity for the full light, the full fire, the full potential to come out. Because we think if we start to live from the heart, it's all going to be, you know, uh, nice and synchronicities and miracles all the time. No, sometimes you have to go through right. to dig into the dirt first. And because you need that resistance for your, for your, to become a diamond, you know, you That's need right. that resistance first to, to have all the fire come out. And you see that in a movie too, with all the people, I mean, they're going through a lot, but they come out stronger and more aligned with their heart and more connected. And, and as uh, um, uh, Michael Beckwith says, the rub, he yeah, says the yeah. rub. And I like to use the example of the, the oyster because the sand gets in and that friction makes that yeah, beautiful yeah, pearl. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's a wonderful yeah. metaphor, you know. And also, like, I'm looking at the wonderful garden behind you and I'm thinking, we have to pull weeds out. We have to do the same thing in our head. Pull the weeds out that aren't working to make our beautiful brain and heart together. <laughs> yeah, because we never we never plan for weeds. But you know, if you plant a tree, you want the tree. But the weeds are also growing there, and it's oh. part of life. The, the weeds are really also important, but we don't want them, and we don't want to see them. But they're there, and we yes. need, need to take a look at them. Yeah. And, and pull them out. <laughs> So what, what affirmations or visualizations do you use for your everyday ritual that you do to keep the accentuating, you know, keeping in your heart and that mind-heart connection? I have many. <laughs> um, I've got a book right here. Um, so I could take the book and do one with you. But one powerful one is three blessings. Um, every day I ask myself, um, you know, what am I grateful for? And, um, you know, if, if you really uh, look for uh, three things you're really grateful for every day, and you also ask yourself, why am I grateful, you know, then um, that's really powerful because we have so much to be grateful for. Yeah. If we become grateful and practice gratitude and, 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 and really see that there is so much abundance and that our essence is infinite love, infinite intelligence, and that we are already, you know, divine, uh, then we really start to see that everything is perfect. Uh, it's, it's just from the limited perspective of the mind that we see scarcity and problems and, 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 and lack of solutions, but everything is there. All the answers are inside. Yes. And if you start to live from that perspective and become grateful for who you essentially are, the divine spirit who has the answers, who is here, you know, for for its spiritual growth, and um, your heart opens because you start to see things from a much higher, more beautiful, more aligned perspective. So, so I'm just uh, marrying this back to you. So you say being grateful for three things on a yes. day on a daily level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. That that's beautiful because I mean there, there are there are many practices in the book, but oh, this is yeah. one very powerful uh, that one uh, that comes up now oh so you moved you moved yeah I had to I yeah. had to move because I did uh, I did not have the connection uh, yeah. right there so right. I had to right. yeah 
Okay. As long as we can see your face, that's the most important. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, so if we're back to three wonderful gratitudes. And is there any visualizations that you'd like to share um, for your affirmations? No, but there is a, a wonderful practice that you can do to open your heart. Um, it is from the Institute of Heart Math in Boulder Creek, California. And um, it is actually breathing in love, goodness, appreciation, gratitude for, f for five mm -hmm. seconds. The count of five, yes. The count of five and then breathing out. Yeah. So breathe in love, goodness, appreciation, love, mm. gratitude for five counts yeah. and then breathe it out. And don't pause in between. Just right, right. And if yeah. you do that for a while, I do that, yeah. uh, you know, when I do screenings, I do that a lot afterwards when I do Q&A. And you just breathe in for yes. five seconds yes. and then breathe out for five seconds. And that really opens the heart. And you breathe in through the heart and you breathe out through the heart. And it's also good for you if you have high blood pressure. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <clears throat> so is that how you keep your heart open? It, let's say some, you have a challenge and you, you feel a constriction happening. What do you do yes. to, to counteract that? Well, it's very important to realize that there are many ways to connect with the heart. And it's also very important that we all are different. Uh, when I asked all these people I've interviewed, how do you connect with the heart and how do you keep your heart open during, you know, challenging times? They all said something different. Isabel Allende said, I connect with the heart when I write and when I'm playing with my dogs. And Eckhart Tolle said, I connect with the heart in the present moment. And Maya Angelou said, I connect with the heart in stillness and true prayer. And Deepak Chopra said, I connect with the heart when I put my hand there and my attention there. And Jane Goodall said, I connect with the heart t in nature. And I think, uh, I thought in the beginning, that's really confusing because they're all saying something different. And then I thought, oh my God, this is so powerful because we are all different. We all have a different blueprint. And it is our task to figure out what resonates with us. So I think you should do some investigation and look what works for you. For me, it is being in nature, walking in nature, barefoot if I can, uh, cultivating gratitude. Um, listening to music I love yes. uh, that that helps me to align with my heart and in the book there are many tools many practices for different people um, and, and and everyone just has to read it and look at it and see what resonates with them yes absolutely I, kn I know for myself I'll read some wonderful uh, writings you know spiritual writings and that just puts me in that place of gratitude and peace Yes. So. Ah. As you all know, you say, oh, I do transcendental meditation to align myself. And then a lot of people try it and it doesn't work for them. And people say you should do yoga. And then, you know, you realize that it doesn't work for you. So look what works for you. Right. You know, right. try to figure that out. Yeah, well, practice, yeah. you know, practice all that's available, you know, and educate yourself for what is available and then practice yeah. each one. So whatever, I mean, for me, when I first started meditating, it wasn't totally natural, but what I started with was focusing in on a candle, you know, to, yes. to, to have that discipline of your mind and your yes. heart to the, to the candle, to the flame, you know, and I was thinking, well, this is the flame of God. You know, this is, yes. this is God. Yeah. So I connected with that. And then it became easier just to get into a meditative state without the candle yes. or with the candle. So, yes. you know, and then to integrate your body with that. that that's the thing. So, so living from your heart and mind in yes. ba balance, you know, talk about that. So you have that because I know that you were definitely more mind brain oriented 
And, yeah. you know, to to get that balance, you know, it's just like the other day, last week I, I had a show and, and this woman was saying, well, how can you not be in your head when you're, you know, talking? And I said, well, wait a minute, because if your mind and your heart are in balance, how can you articulate how you feel from your heart if you can't go through your mind? Mm. Well, I think it's really important. Uh, I mean, we've been taught to do everything with our mind, and that's okay, um, but it's very limited. It's, you know, what I said, the mind can, if you're on a boat on the river, the mind can only see the next bend, the next turn on right, the river, right. and the heart can see the whole river from source to sea. Um, it's really important to see what their relationship is. I think that if you look at all spiritual traditions and all, you know, religions, then the heart has been described as a source of wisdom and intelligence more than the mind but the heart is supposed to be the master and we have made the mind the master in our lives yeah, yeah. And that's why we are not in balance if we want to be in balance then the heart should be the master and the mind should become a servant Absolutely. and if we understand that relationship then um, we can uh, you know really live from a more balanced perspective and i think that the mind can only learn to trust the heart if it sees that the heart is wiser. So you have to give the mind reasons to learn to trust the heart and to be in service of the heart. Uh, because the mind is a very good executioner. The mind can really help the heart. And the heart basically needs the mind. Well, yeah, to yeah. be able to express. I mean, yeah. we, you know, um, you know what I loved about the one part, one of the parts that I loved about the movie was the scientific studies that have been mm. done about the heart. I think, can we talk about that some more? Because I think sure. there's, there's sure. you know, there's proof that the heart has more energy beyond, you know, that's, that's um, invisible, that, that we, you know, we need to talk about because, you know, the mind again takes over and knowing that scientifically that our, our heart has so much more energy. Yes. Oh, that's yes. so powerful. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a lot of men, skeptical men especially, they say, okay, it's good that you have that experiment where they show, you know, that the heart can see events before they take place. And this is actually a scientific explanation for how our intuition works. A lot of people need that in order to see the rest of the movie, in order to believe in the power of the heart and the wisdom of the heart. I just think it's very important, especially for, you know, the ones that are not living in their heart. You know, it's just, it's, there's proof, you know, scientific proof. Just like, I, I believe it was last year, uh, the Italian scientists said, the, you know, basically the Big Bang Theory, it's, it is scientific that there is a spark from, that's bigger than us, you know, yes. and I say God, spirit, universe, whatever, but it's, it's like, yes, they finally, the scientific community is saying, yes, there is something beyond man, woman. <laughs> ah. yeah, it's, it's, it's also important to know, you know, why is the heart so important? Why it's so important to listen to the heart? And it's what Mark Nepo says in the movie. He says, a fish cannot drown in water, a bird cannot fall from the sky. Yeah. Each creature must find their own God-given element. And he says, it's easy for fish and it's easy for birds, but it's not so easy for us human beings. And, and, and you know, that's the reason why I made the movie in the first place. It's not so easy for us human beings because um, why, you know, we, when we are born, we don't uh, know what our element is and nobody's telling us. And all yeah. we get is this very, very limited left brain uh, oriented education. Yeah. And so we can only figure out why we are here, what we are supposed to do and what our purpose is if we open our hearts. Because, you know, we don't find our purpose. Our, our purpose finds us when we come into our heart. And uh, we can get there through thinking. We can only do it when we open our hearts. Then we know why we are here. Then we know what we have to do. And life is so short, so we really have to, you know, figure it out, I think. Oh, well, that's why I'm doing my show. Yeah. I mean, I... I I came about upon that about in 2008 and it was like I've got to write I've got two two books starting a third book and it's like that's why I started this show because it's so yeah. important that unconditional love you know and especially in our society it's been yeah. so driven by money and it's 
it's it has to change it has to change first right. it's, this, it's all fear it's all fear yes absolutely and for our survival we have to live from the heart mm. for our very mm. survival yes yes but, but it's, know, it's good to, to sorry sorry to, Go ahead. I, it's good to realize what it means, uh, living from your heart, you know, because we say, follow your heart. And when we point to ourselves, we don't point to our head, but to our heart. And when we say to our partner, I love you, we don't say, I love you with all my head. We say, I love you with all my heart. <laughs> so it's our essence. So it means following your heart, living from your heart, living and working from your heart. It means following the aliveness that you experience yes. in every moment. So if you have to make a decision, then you can look at it from a, you know, the mind perspective, linear, rational, logical, and it's good to take into account all the pros and cons from a, you know, mind perspective. But it's also very important to realize how does it feel, and the heart is the center of that. And living from your heart, working from your heart, is putting the aliveness, that thing that makes you come alive in every moment, to put that first. So in every moment, you have to ask yourself, what does make, me, what does make me come alive now? And, and and follow that and then you will see that you make better decisions that they're more aligned that they're focused on harmony uh, love reverence for life uh, gratitude and and, and 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 you will connect with other people because if, if we would be talking all the time from our minds we would be you know like robots there's a saying in the torah words that come from the heart touch the heart and real deep connection is made on the heart level and that's what we're all looking for. We're not looking for more money or more power. We're looking for a real deep heart connection and to work from that place because that's our essence. That's who we really are. And when we experience that, we have the feeling of coming home. And, and, and that's, you know, I mean, the fact is that there's more heart attacks on Monday morning than any other time. Yeah. And it's yeah. like if, if people could shift that, that, that energy because it's all energy, shift it to nurturing their heart and practicing the love from their heart, then I bet the, the, that statistic would change drastically. You know, the, the heart attacks, and especially in the US. But you know, there's one thing, I mean, you, you grew up in Belgium, is that true? Yeah, part, part in Belgium, part in the Netherlands, yeah. You know, it, I mean, my experience is that Europeans do uh, exercise living from their heart more. Is that, That's not, it's not true? I, oh, okay. Well, um, I, I, I don't know. I think Americans are, no, you know, I mean, of course, I'm in California. You're in California. But I, I, I feel an openness to the heart in certain parts of the U.S., yeah. But in, uh, yes, in, in the U.S., in, in, in Europe, it's true. You know, certain parts of the world are more uh, tuned in, tuned into the heart, I would say, yeah. Okay, and, and I, w I wasn't trying to put you on the spot. I just, my, my own experience, um, you know, but it's all over the world. It's everywhere in the world, definitely. Yes, yes. So, so, um, so what else would you like to share? Uh, I would like to add what you just said. Oh. Um, if we are in a state of heart coherence, that's a state where we experience more love, more you know, compassion, more appreciation, more gratitude, then uh, and we can measure this. This is a state that uh, where we are in the most opt you know in optimal state. When we experience this, our heart is sending signals to the brain, and our brain opens up, and our left brain and right brain are working together more. So we are using more of our brain capacity when we experience love in our hearts. So we become measurably more intelligent. And when we experience stress, what you just mentioned, and anger and fear, we use less of our brain capacity. So we become more stupid. So if you want to be, become more intelligent and use more of your brain potential, then open your heart. And this is just a scientific fact. That's what heart math is showing us. And, and, you know, it's wonderful that you brought that up because I think everybody would like to be more intelligent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if it, I mean, when the heart opens, our mind expands. Uh, and I mean, you notice you never make good decisions when you are in fear or anger or frustrated no. or in stress. No. They and always come from a place of love, a place of an open heart, a place yes. of alignment. And that allows the natural hormones to release. <laughs>
Oh, goodness. Well. Yeah, there's something more I would like to share. Oh, absolutely. Um, when I started this project, you know, I looked at all the spiritual traditions and religions, and yes, the heart has been described as a source of wisdom and intelligence. And I was looking for ambassadors of the heart because I couldn't interview, you know, Jesus and Lao Tzu and, and the Buddha anymore. And I interviewed all these wonderful ambassadors of the heart, Maya Angelou. Yes. You know, she spoke at the first inauguration of Bill Clinton and she recited a poem where she encourages us to work more from the heart. And Paulo Coelho, who wrote The Alchemist, The Alchemist is about a shepherd boy, Santiago, who learns to live from the intuition of his heart. So these are all wonderful ambassadors and also in combination with the heart med science, it's, you know, wonderful knowledge about the heart. But I said, oh my God, this, the heart, it sounds also abstract. So if the heart is really a reliable source of wisdom and intelligence, then I need to know how to use it and apply it in my daily lives. How can I use it to improve my relationships? How can I use it to improve my health? How can I use it to make uh, more money? How can I use it to, um, you know, make my career choices? So I asked everyone I've interviewed, you know, how can we use it for all those areas in life? So it has become a very practical book because the heart is already so abstract and there's a lot of information, but we, if you know why learn it if you can't apply it. So I think yeah, it's a really practical right. book. And I think um, the movie opens us up and gives us just a taste of what the heart is and what its potential is. But I think the book gives us more practical information. Right. And I would like to share that for the people who are asking, you know, what's the added value of the book mm -hmm. in combination with uh, the heart, uh, with the, the, the movie. Right. So you have seen the movie, what, what did you, experience what did it uh, bring you oh wow well i you know i talk about every show i talk about unconditional love yes. and i really got that through the whole movie that it is unconditional love meaning you know not judging not criticizing because that shuts your heart off immediately and yes. just the openness, you know, and, and the forgiveness piece. And uh, the first, you know, the story that you had in the beginning and how, how that Asian man opened up. You know, he became, allowed himself to become vulnerable, you know, to the love and, and sharing. And that, that is a wonderful example for all human beings. Not just mm. not just men, and yes, you know men are are you know trained to kind of protect that and not be vulnerable, and you know the more that we are born vulnerable as women too will help you know the vulnerability of of man. So not that the men aren't capable. Oh my gosh, you know they have huge hearts too. Um, so it's, it's just the unconditional love and then mm. practicing and using it, you know, using it on all levels in your life. Yes. And, it's, you know, especially with business relationships. Yes. I mean, to me, that's what my purpose and passion is because I, I've been back, I had, I've been an entrepreneur and I went back into the corporate world and I was appalled, you know, lack of yes. integrity. And so what I got is just, you know, how important it is to, for the survival of our species on this planet Yes. Um, is just to live, you know, practice. And it's a discipline. It is a discipline to, to learn how to, to listen to your heart. I mean, I know that I feel with my heart every day, you know, if, yes. especially the people that are close to me, I can feel that, that energy if their yes. day day is going off or on or you know they're happy i mean you know so i just think it's a wonderful message i can't say it enough and say it strong enough on how important this is and that's yes. why i wanted to have you on the show because yes. you know it's just it's the most important thing it's i agree <laughs> I, I agree that's that sometimes i mean that's why i made the movie it's the most important thing, but it's also very abstract to many people. And how can we make it, you know, more feasible for them? How can we make it more, you know, practical? Uh, and I, that's why I've interviewed all these people. And I think that it is essential that we start to live more from the heart as a species. And it is also a matter of 
human evolution uh, that we do that because you know we, we will not make it if we don't uh, start living and working more from the heart Absolutely. I, I, I think we, we need it if you look at, at at our planet and if you would be an alien and if you would look at our planet and yeah. you would look at it from above then you would see oh everyone is living uh, on this planet it's a spaceship called earth uh, why are they fighting each other? Yeah. Why are they uh, not understanding each other? They're all on the same boat, you know, yeah. it's, and it, it's just a limited consciousness. Yeah. And we need to evolve and we need to grow up uh, as a species. And we will only grow up if we open our hearts. There's yeah. no other way. Yes, and, and I realize too that, you know, I, I mean, I've had a lot of challenges in my life. And, you know, I guess par that's part of it is having challenges and once yeah. you get through the challenge, um, yeah. and you're still still with your heart, and you're not closing up, you're not becoming bitter, yeah. then then you can, you know, every day there's going to be challenges. You know, that's just yes. part of life. Yes, I would like to say something about it. You know, if you're not going to live from your heart, you will have a lot of challenges. Uh, if you're and more, yes. If, if, if you're going to live from your heart, you will have a lot of challenges too because it's part of life. But I will tell you, if you live from the, your heart, from your essence, you have more power uh, to overcome everything Absolutely. because you are working from your power source. Absolutely. And Absolutely. your power source is not your mind. Your biggest power source yeah. is your heart. Yeah. The, the heart has an electromagnetic field that is 5,000 times bigger as that of the mind. So, you know, if you w want to overcome everything, then you better work from the heart. And that is, that to me is is applied to business you know i mean yes. our, our relationships i mean that's what it's all about is the relationships with integrity with with ethics you know from heartfelt you know you can do business with with as long as it's like-minded you know yes. um and be successful there's more than enough for everybody and there's more than enough love for everybody if yes. they, you know, there really is. It's just being aware and opening up that energy source. Yes. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree. I completely agree. And I think that you are doing your part when you are doing this show to bring this awareness uh, to our planet. Yes, and thank you for sharing this. And I'm so happy that I was able to meet you in San Francisco um, yes. uh, on your world tour. <laughs> So, yes, yes, yes. You know, so when are you coming back? Um, well, I will be touring through the U.S. now until the end of this month. Uh, and um, I will be coming back to the U.S. in September. Oh, okay. uh, so I will be touring now through Europe and South America in uh, June, July and August. Wonderful. And then in September, I'll be back uh, for the U.S. and Canada. Are you yes. coming to it, San Francisco again? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know my schedule, uh, but I know in September I will come to San Francisco. Oh, good. Well, yeah. then we so, can we can you can come back on the show. I would love to come back. Uh, I certainly have more to share. Then, if you ask me about this, if people want to know more about screenings in the U.S., then they can go to the website of our U.S. distributor. Yes. And that's Beyond Word. Dot com so beyond word without an s just beyond yeah. word.com and they can also go to our website the power of the heart.com so that's the power of the heart.com if they want to know more if they want to know where they can purchase uh, the movie or the book then they can go to our website the power of the heart.com do you know if the movie is going to be playing um, in other theaters you know up in the in this area the San Francisco area? Yes, it will be playing everywhere, uh, but I don't know it uh, by heart because, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. out okay. now in 70 countries, so I don't know exactly where yeah, and sure. when. Yeah, sure, you wouldn't. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, if you just go to the website of our uh, U.S. distributor, beyondword.com, then you will find uh, all the information. And you can also go to our Facebook page, uh, The Power of the Heart. You will recognize it uh, because of the blue vignette, which means it's the official Facebook page. There you will also find all the info that you want, uh, that you need to, yeah. Well, Batiste, I, I'm just very happy that you could come on the show and share this wonderful message, which is 
you know, um, it's reiterating um, to a lot of people, but it's also just, you know, well, we need to be reminded, you know, people are busy and, and stubborn and they need to be reminded. So I just, you know, bless you and thank you for all the work that you're doing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I, I, I agree, people need to be reminded and I need to be reminded every day. So do uh, I. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on your show, Cheryl. Yes, and thank you for coming. And then hopefully we'll see you again in September. Okay. I'm in person, to probably. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I love to do it in person yes, next time. Yes, that would be great because that's more oh. impactful. And we can have an audience. Oh, I love to. No, we'll audience. have an audience. We'll pack in here. Oh, great. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Okay. All right. Enjoy bye -bye. the rest of your trip. I will do that. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. My name is Maya Angelou, and I believe that the heart is the most forceful, impactful element in our lives. If the heart is so powerful, why is it so easily broken? You will never, ever reach your full potential if you don't open your heart. I mean, sometimes people hate one person, and that's bad enough. I hated eight million people. They tried to kill me. How do you forgive such a thing? I wish to see good in people. It took almost dying to make that journey from my head to my heart. The power of the heart is to be connected with who you are at the deepest level. Well, that's fine, but how can we do that in the real world? I am a person who has a lot of fear. Every time that I have to write a new book, would I be able to share my soul? We did an experiment, and we actually discovered something quite remarkable. The heart seems to be connected to a type of intuition that is not bound by the limits of time and space. But what is that source of intuition, and how can we learn to tap into more of that? What is wrong with you? You forget? The heart is the only thing we can trust. I'll leave you with this. Never give up. Be grateful for who you are and where you've come from and what you have and be grateful for your freedom and eat healthy. Good nutrition feeds the mind and your body temple and don't forget to exercise. Feed your spirituality with meditation and prayer. Thank the divine spirit. Love yourself unconditionally. Stop criticizing, stop judging, and allowing others to dominate the way you feel and think about yourself. Be compassionate and share your abundance and wealth with others. When fear knocks, let faith answer the door. Remember the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. integrity. Say only what you mean and avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own dream or illusion. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. Always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy versus opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best, and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. The world sometimes feels like an insane asylum. You can decide whether you want to be an inmate or pick up your visitor's badge. You can be in the world, but not engage in the melodrama of it. You can become a spiritual being by having a human experience thoroughly and fully by Deepak Chopra. 
Wealth is the Ability to Fully Experience Life by Henry David Thoreau. Thank you, Marin TV, for facilitating our show and especially to my crew, Brad and Lori. Thank you. If you like our show, please let us know at hashtag Marin TV. Please support and become a member of Marin TV. Bye for now. Until next time.